Hello fellow cultivators. This video is a special thanks to my 1000 subscribers. And yes, after one and a half years of uploading the first video for Tale of Immortal in this channel, we finally reached this milestone. And I would like to thank all of you guys support for this channel and I'm really grateful for it. So I know the title of this video is about, you know, why you should play Chaos in this game and a few tips about it. However, before we get into this topic, I want to talk something about, you know, this channel and this game because I think, you know, a thousand subscribers is really the time you do such things. So I started this channel pretty random and spontaneously. So I've started playing this game quite early, like, you know, the game has been three years. I mean, within a few months of this game came out, I already started playing it, that was even before the second update and everything, so the highest realm you can reach is actually in Arsene, so at that time. I then I learned a lot of things about this game from the Chinese community. You know, this game is actually really popular on BDD. Like, there are a lot of, you know, uh, how to say, uploaders, that, that's how they call it there. They have many subscribers and about this game, and uh, I learned a lot of things from them. Then I joined the official Discord, and to my surprise, I realized that the English community do not share the same common knowledge about this game. There are a lot of wrong you know, assumptions what's considered as facts about this game, such as, you know, Wind Sword is the only way to survive Chaos, or things like Spear is not available in Chaos. As you can see from this video right now, Spear is very strong in Chaos. And uh, yeah, many people do not know some basic things like how to reach their cooldown special skills or how, you know, Fairy Flame works. Can you imagine people do not understand how Fairy Flame works and of course they will not survive kills. And uh, this is the time I try to argue with people a lot and yeah, you know me, if you go to the official Discord, you will see me answering questions and sometimes, nowadays I do less but still argue. And uh, yeah, at one day I realized that instead arguing with people, maybe it's the easiest way just to show them how things can be played, how builds can be played in Chaos and so on. This is why, if you look at the older videos of my channel, they are mostly build showcase in Chaos, and most of them don't even have any commentary. And uh, yeah, because I was not really trying to make, you know, a new player guide or anything, just to tell you that, you know, this game has a lot of different ways of playing, and chaos is just a simple thing to do, if you know the basics. And I have no intention to show that I'm the best player, because I am not. I was a bad player since I was a kid, I was never good at any game. The only reason I seem to be good at this game is because I have learned a lot from the Chinese community, as I mentioned in the beginning. And I just want to spread the knowledge to the English community, so that more people can enjoy this game. But as time passed by, and with interactions with a lot of players, looking at surveys, answering questions, a realization has come to me that nobody plays Chaos for this game. Nobody enjoys battle components. Most of people, they watch my video because I gave some simple, you know, basic new player things, and how to progress, how to get skills, how to re refresh your destiny list, etc. Which, okay, I am happy that I can be helpful for many new players. I'm really happy that my videos can help many people. However, that's not really why I started this channel. The reason I, why I started this channel is I wish more people can deep into chaos and into the deep, you know, combat system. Because I think it is worth it. So, my opinion is, once you start this game, you should start with normal just to get familiar with the gaming system because, you know, sometimes it can be confusing and especially if you are the first time to play this type of cultivation game, it can be really confusing. You go as far as you can until you get bored, you know, because in normal difficulty when you are fighting the enemies, you just need to press down the mouse button and kill everything on the screen. I think the game is much more enjoyable if you start to play Chaos because then you are forced to know how builds in this game works and you would enjoy it more because knowing more things and explore more things and manage to challenge more difficult enemies and then when you succeed to defeat more difficult enemies that achievement 
accomplishment feeling. It's why you are playing this game, right? And、uh, but this is not main thing. So before I go to the reasons why you should play chaos, I want to first take a few minutes talk about one big confusion about chaos difficulty here. So when you look at the difficulty level, you might notice there are some differences. The main difference here is that many people were scared that oh, once you die in chaos, your save will be permanently deleted. Well, first of all, this is not a chaos thing. It is exactly the same thing at hell difficulty. I learned this just now as well because I never looked into what does hell difficulty do. Yeah, you got one bug or eight points, and once you die again, you say will be permanently deleted. But all of this just means one thing: that when you die the first time, it breaks your initial artifact. Be it bug or eight, be it eye of providence, be it mythical gourd, you should just press. ESC button, click on reload and save that button. It's a simple thing, and the reason why those artifacts exist that no matter which artifact you choose, they will protect you from one death is because of this. And you might notice here he's talking about the Bagua Jade points when you don't even know what is a Bagua Jade if you are the first time playing this, because all of this is just a relic of the early developer. Developing phase of this game, when Bagua Jade is the only artifact, initial artifact you can choose, and that is the time when the developers are lazy. So the way they try to differentiate the different difficulties is this, you know, Bagua Jade points. Now, the more once they added Eye of Providence and Mystical Board, you know, these two artifacts they brought you a lot of game content. It's very hard for me to imagine anyone would continue playing the game if they broke their Eye of Providence or Gord, Mystical Gourd. Because come on, if you cannot use those artifacts, you are losing I don't know 20% of your gaming content. So when they, after they added new stuff, they already knew that there's no point of differentiating the difficulties by the Bagua Jade or you are dying or not, because no matter which one you choose. Once it's broken, the only reasonable choice to reload the save so that you can still use this artifact and enjoy those gaming content, right? So, just to let you know, this is just a relic system. And、uh, another thing is, I this is actually one of my biggest surprise during these one and a half years that I didn't know many people think saving is cheating. I feel like we have been playing. Different type of game, because in my more than 30 years gaming life, saving is just a part of the gaming experience in almost every game I play. Don't consider those, you know, less than one hour time you are just fighting with each other, PVP type of games. Yeah, of course you can't save in that, but for any PVE content, saving is really just normal thing to do. So I do not wish to argue about it anymore. I mean, that is. Like if you want to challenge yourself, do an Iron Man mode. It's fine. You can do that after you learn about this game. But in order to learn about this game, you need to first play Chaos. And in order for you to learn, you need to save and load to learn boss attack patterns. Once you learn about it, fine. Try your challenge. Try your Iron Man challenge. It's not difficult. That difficult that you might think. In fact, if again, if you go to Billy Billy, there are tons of players who do. One life runs, and they do one life runs with many different constraints, and they manage to do it with every single build. So once you know this game well, you can challenge yourself. But in order to reach that state, let's first play chaos normally. You know, reload the save <laughs> because that is actually my first tip for people who play chaos: save a lot. Okay, just a few more words about this saving issue. I know I've been stuck in this screen for six minutes. It's really bad for a video, but I want to talk about this. That I don't think chaos is a challenge. It's just a normal gaming mode. Like I think during my argument with other people, I realized something that they think chaos is a challenge. They think that when I say you should play chaos, I'm using a, a elitism mindset. That I'm bragging myself, I can play chaos, which is cannot be more untrue. 
Like I have been saying that I'm always bad at games. The only reason it seems that I'm good at this game is because I know some basic knowledge about it. And yeah, I'm trying to spread those knowledge to the English community by making those videos. And there's nothing for me to brag about this because I consider playing Chaos just a normal game experience because that is the game how it's supposed to be played. So I will play it normally by saving it, load the save when I die. That's how it is. And you should do the same because, come on, it's just a normal thing to do, right? What's what's wrong with loading the save when you die? I mean, without doing those, how are you supposed to learn about this game? Even when you are playing Souls game, you have a, a bonfire. You, your fire, you don't get permanently deleted if you die. Right? Anyways, now, I will try to be faster, a bit talk about what other things kills provide you. So, there are actually some really good things about it. Like, you get high rarity skills, which is really important because I have been saying that you, if you manage your set well, you can get red rarity, you know, LMB, RMB, motion skill, ultimate, and five general mind skills from your second manual pavilion. But that is only true if, if you are playing chaos. So that is one thing. Second, if you fight a world boss, again, if you have watched my playthroughs, you know, you see that I farm world boss. Again, you need to save and load to farm a world boss. Sorry to say that, but yeah. When you farm the world boss, you got double job base and also red rarity for manuals. So the world boss become a very good resource. However, that is again only true in chaos. So in general, chaos also give you double items so that when you farm stuff like shards, combined chi, or farming for those comprehension and learning skills materials, you will be double job. So it reduces a lot of your grind, which is again I like about. And uh, yeah, so when you play Chaos, you got double job and higher rarity job, so it's much easier for you to progress and to build a build, so that you can challenge more difficult enemies. That's probably one of the another thing, which some people don't like, but I think it's a good thing about Chaos, because the enemies are more difficult, which means that first you need to make yourself a good build in order to pass by it. And here's one another thing. I see a lot of people complaining about NPCs in this game are so difficult. But if you have watched my videos and you have talked, hear me talking about it, it's clear that if you have to do the basic thing, which is learn your mind skills, unlock or sub skills, you know, comprehend it, you will be stronger than any heaven chosen in the same realm as you, and you will be stronger than NPCs who are one realm higher than you. And if you progress a bit later in the game, you might be even stronger than NPCs that are two realms higher than you, just because you did the basic thing that is learn mind skills. You don't even need a build to do that. Okay, and once you start with a build, you can defeat any NPCs. <laughs> because, I mean, you, you only really need one thing that is higher attack than their defense, and a good skill set, so that you can dodge their skills, etc., and do damage to them. And this is actually the two things, high attack and good skill set. It's also the two key points so that you can progress kills. In general, in chaos, if you cannot reach that stage, you can defeat all the NPCs in the same room. You definitely cannot defeat the world boss that is blocking you to progress into the next realm. You see the logic here that in order for you to progress literally in the game, you are naturally stronger than other NPCs. And I think that is actually a very good point, because we are supposed to be special. We are the main protagonist in this game, and in many plots, you can see that we are the special one. We are the one who managed to fill the Eastern Sea with Jingwei. We are the ones who defeat five divine beasts. Everyone else don't know this information. We have to give them the beast souls. We are the ones who reunite the entire alliance and progress into Chiyu Deep Land. We are the ones who defeat Xin Tian that nobody else can do. Of course, we should be stronger than all the NPCs in the same realm, because that is how it's supposed to be. And only in Chaos, just to progress, you are naturally in that state. This is why I think Chaos is how this game is supposed to be played. Alright. So here we start to 
give a few tips about how to, you know, start playing guild. And uh, actually, most of the tips are already there in my 10 tips to new player video, except they are more in the later part of the video, too, like from 6 to 10, something like that. So I, lo I know a lot of you won't watch a video that long, but unfortunately, this part again is in the later part of this video as well. So I'm afraid that many of those will still won't see it. But anyways, let's say it. So number one tip is still, you know, to save a lot because that is really the basic of everything, especially for the few tips I will talk about later. You will see that you cannot achieve those if you do not save. And the second tip is actually get higher attack by choosing some thing you know, natural destiny is that increase your attack. I know I've been talking about the importance of luck and insight and everything else can be improved later in the game. However, if you are playing chaos, I would suggest you to choose something that increase your initial attack and that will help your initial game experience a lot. And the reason of this, I think this is some time to, to talk about this basic knowledge again. What does those things do? Like martial arts spirit rules, they do not directly affect your damage at all. The only use they being here, one is so that it is the minimal requirement you can learn a manual by yourself. Two, if you have higher, for example, if you have a higher spear and the enemy deals does a spear attack to you, you have a higher chance to neutrify the attack, which neutralize, as you can see written here. Neutralize means half damage, and that's it. The same thing goes to you. If you are doing spear damage to enemy, if you have higher spear stats than them, they have a less chance to neutralize your attack, which is, again, just half your damage. And they do not directly affect any damage you do to the enemy. What are the things that directly affect it? The attack and defense. Your attack minus enemy's defense is the biggest damage multiplier you can get in the game, even bigger than Fairy Flames, because this is the basic thing. If you if your attack is less than enemy defense, you do one damage to them, and that's the reason why you, m many of you cannot do damage to higher level NPCs, because your attack is less than their defense. And for the same reason, because the enemy mobs, mystical monsters in the game, they do have their own defense, and you, that's why you should have higher attack and make your damage to them much higher. And this applies to later game as well. So once you choose your character with a good attack, starting attack, when you progress into the game, there are a few other things you can do to increase your stats, especially important attack. That is, number one, if you add a chi refining and, you know, very beginning, you probably don't even need to learn a minor skill, not even mentioning a rare rarity one, because it doesn't even matter at that stage, that rarity, because all of them have the same type of adding like a plus one attack. One thing can help you a lot is go to tower and drink alcohol. The biggest merry drink which can give you mighty strength, rust, robust body, light as feather. The first one gives you attack, second one gives you defense, the third one gives you a travel speed and agility. They are quite useful. The cheapest one will also give you blood boil which increase your HP and uh, don't remember which one which increase your MP I think. And the middle one, one good thing is body of steel, which increases your cr critical resistance. Because in chaos, if the boss land a crit on you, it might one shot you. So crit resistance quite important. So drink those wines from Tower can help you, even without mind skills. But of course, once you go to foundation, you should probably learn mind skill. And again, go to your mind skill page. Look at this character. I only learned a few move most important, which is attack, and usually at a certain point you might want to get a defense as well, and MP1, which is really important, again, because the first sub-skill here, guide as a MP mind skill, can have the sub-skill to generate a shield point for every one energy used to cast skills, and one shield point can cancel completely one attack from the boss even if the boss, that attack should do 1 million damage to you. So, a shield guide is really, really helpful for you to survive in early stage of the game. And, uh, yeah, and here are the things that 
for things like secret menu, divine power, and more. When you already start making a build, for example, this character has so formation, so that is middle to late game. That's when you need to get those things. But in early game, you really need is just two things: two mind skills. One is a good move mind skill. One is a shield guy. Doesn't matter what kind of shield. For example, this one is blue, uncomprehended. But as long as there is this shield sub skill here, it's helpful. And another thing that you can do in early game is always to learn skills from your master, and that is quite important. Again, as an example here, you see I have 1,500, and that is because my divine power already provide me quite a few attack. And now if I remove this move, notice that I'm at soul formation, and this move is only not and soul, so it's one realm lower than it's supposed to be, and this reduce my attack to 1,000. So just one single move here is 30% of attack increase. This is why you should always get an up to realm move. Imagine this one is actually soul formation. It will jump it directly to 1,500 ish, right? But when you're at early game, one thing you can do is go to your master, and、uh, you can always make masters if you're a good, nice person, and they are, you know, family oriented, traditional, nice person. Then you can learn skills. Learn the their move. You can learn skills up to two realms higher than you, and especially in early game, just by the realm difference. Even if you do not have any of those newly learned mind skill, unlock the sub skill. No nothing. No comprehension. Just by the sheer realm difference, will give you a lot of attack that you supposed to have. Imagine this one without anything enlightenment. It's about the same as this Nars and Soul one, right? But this one has good, some good sub skills and also comprehended. And this is the case more in the middle to late game. In early game, just realm difference is already much better. And yes, once you progress to the middle to late game, you should find you know start farming, world boss, go to sect, etc. Thanks to the fact that you are at the chaos and you can save, you can get some good manuals and then you can. Unlock them, comprehend them, and with up to realm mind skills, you can defeat enemies in chaos. The last tip, and it's also actually one of the most important tips, that is to learn boss attack patterns. And in order to learn this, you would have to save and load, die a few times, try to understand how things goes. I mean, you can also watch my videos about boss attack patterns, but I would say. You know, hands-on self-experience actually help you learn much better. And、uh, most of the bosses in the early game stage, for example, you know, the tree, the the Goliath crab, etc., like Duncan, Harpy, all of them have very simple, clear pattern. And if you know them very well, you can dodge all of their attack easily. Like Duncan, have a pattern. It will first. Summon, okay, and you can do this. You can dodge it. It will charge towards you now. Ooh, okay. Now it's a tornado time. Tornado is a typical thing that you should just be. You know, now charge once. It will charge twice again. And you keep distance during all this time. Breeze cannot hurt you. And then you will do this thing five times. One, two. Okay, I'm ignoring everything else, but if you are playing, you should clear clear up those small mobs first, right? And tornado, that's another thing about dodging attack. You need to be a bit more calm. Do not just running around like a, you know a fly without head. You know where are they hitting. You keep calm. You move a little bit out of outside their range, and that's basically it. And of course, if you are faster, you have higher agility. It's always easier to dodge. All the that kind of every boss skills, but yeah, as you can see, I was not hated by Duncan at all. So, I guess that will be everything about tips for chaos play. So, just to recap, number one, save, save a lot because saving is the way for you to learn and the way for you to farm. Number two. Focusing on some basic and but important stats such as attack, 
So, when you create a character, get more attack, at the beginning of the game, or during the entire game, use tavern buffs and learn mind skills. In the beginning, you can learn skills from your master, higher realm ones. In the later part of the game, try to find a good menu, mind skill menu, unlock the, all the you know sub skills, comprehend them, and uh, of course, in order for you to not die, know the boss attack patterns, try to dodge everything. Agility, of course, helps, and also a shield guide helps a lot. So, I think that would be all the tips I have for the chaos place. So, that will be everything about this video. I know this video is boring, it's talking about things many people do not like, but I want to make this video for quite a long time. I want to use this chance to thank you again for subscribing to my channel and for supporting this. And I wish all of you guys have a nice chaos journey and enjoy this game.